This is a time of unprecedented challenges, but also great opportunities for our sector. The pandemic has, of course, had a great impact on sales and margins, but also in your supply chains. Media, consumers, retailers and investors are concerned with the impact of brands on the daily lives of the people working in the factories, making the products we like to wear. At the same time, this increased attention for human rights in supply chains offers serious companies the opportunity to turn a corner in terms of customer relations, risk management and reputation. As a garment or footwear brand, responsible business conduct and human rights due diligence let you support your business resilience by better managing the risks throughout your supply chain. It also helps you attract and bind customers, both end consumers and retail. It allows you to answer the questions they are more and more asking. In fact, soon it will not just be the media or conscious consumers anymore. Legislation is coming starting this year in Germany and soon at the EU level. And that's a good thing, because responsible businesses should be competing at a level playing field. No, even at an advantage to those brands that believe the workers aren't their responsibility. Fairware Foundation helps European brands meet these challenges and explore those opportunities. Our brand liaisons know the business and are dedicated to seeing their member brands succeed. Our specialist teams in 11 production countries provide the services needed to help you and your suppliers prevent human rights violations. And our multi-stakeholder structure with labor unions, NGOs, as well as manufacturing and retail business provides a strong foundation for the practical guidance and credible performance assessment we provide to our member brands. Fairware accepts a limited number of brands as new members to provide them with the best tools and the highest standards in the industry. We welcome your interest and are committed to an industry that provides decent jobs to workers around the world. Our member brands show that this is possible and reap the benefits from that. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wilco van Bokhorst and at Fairware Foundation I focus on human rights due diligence and fair and sustainable purchasing practices. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of brands cancelled their orders, leaving factories without money and orders basically. It also left workers without their wages. It clearly shows how purchasing decisions are influencing the situation on the ground. And in that sense, how we do business matters. And we need to ask ourselves, do we want to have a positive or a negative impact? Like the period after Randa Plaza, there is increased attention for fair and sustainable purchasing practices. And I would like to discern three smaller trends within that bigger trend. The first trend is that we see that there is increased intention towards mandatory human rights due diligence. So that means human rights due diligence that is going to be put in law. And it's really important for brands that they are prepared for this and that they are already ensuring that their purchasing practices are fair and sustainable. Secondly, the, your consumer not the consumer, but your consumer wants to know where their clothes are made and whether they're made under fair and sustainable working conditions. But this also provides opportunity. In the McKinsey report called The State of Fashion, CEO executives actually mentioned digital sales and sustainability as two big opportunities in the garment industry right now. A third trend is that we're moving away from transactional relationships with suppliers towards deeper partnerships with these same suppliers. And deeper partnerships come with fair payment terms, collaborative production planning, open costing, and of course, equal partnerships. At Fair Foundation, we want to lead the industry towards more fair, equitable, and sustainable purchasing practices. We help our members by showing their progress they're making in improving their purchasing practices. Every year our members go through a cycle of the, what we call the brand performance check. Brands like Zeman, Taco or Marco Polo 
and then show to their consumers, to their customers, what progress they are making. At Vera Foundation, we provide more support and tools. For example, tools for open costing, but also support with learning more about the impact of your production planning. Secondly, we also have brand liaisons that provide you with personal support and advice on how to improve. Another benefit of being a Vera member is that a lot of consumers know our logo. And this is also a big benefit to our members because through our logo and through communicating that you're a Femur member, you're actually showing that you're committed to fair and sustainable purchasing practices and that you're in the game to improve the lives of many workers. If you want to get started with improving your purchasing practices, there are three things I would recommend. First of all, do you have internal commitment, especially from your CEO and managers? Are they committed to purchasing practices? To really make a change, and to make a change as suppliers, to make a change for workers, it's really important that your company, and especially your CEO and management, are aware of the issues and also committed to change their practices. Secondly, would be to know your supply chain and to know your suppliers. A lot of brands still work with agents, for example, or intermediaries, and they don't have a direct relationship with their suppliers. So start with mapping and knowing your supply chain, basically. And thirdly, when you've done this, try to see what the issues are at the factory and how you're impacting, for example, production planning and excessive overtime, if excessive overtime is found. There is a clear link between your purchasing practices and the factories on the ground. And you, if you're starting, I would say, try to look into how you're impacting the factories through your purchasing practices. So the future of living wage, at least in the clothing industry, but I think anywhere, has two components. First of all, there is really this need for an integrated approach that includes all the actors and that allows all the actors to take their responsibility in the supply chain. Secondly, it's a future in social dialogue. We really see social dialogue and freedom of association as the enabler to higher wages. When workers are involved in the discussions around their wages, it's more likely that these wage increases will be sustainable. So we really see social dialogue as the key towards higher wages in the garment industry. For that reason, we also actively work together with our trade union partners. Personally, I hope that in the coming years, collaborating with our trade union partners and other organizations, we will be able to create enough critical mass to really make systemic change and move towards a new normal for garment workers. We realized that we needed a three-level approach. So for once, we had to shift the production to the low season. So they gave us a big order in very early year normally six months earlier, so we could start the production in our low season, so we could reduce the excessive overtime. Deuter shifted more orders to the low season. That resulted in more even production levels throughout the year, so there was less pressure on the factory and on the workers. It sounds so easy, but in fact, it is kind of difficult to do this. Many of our distributors can order and plan for themselves and to have a major shift to the low season, we needed them on board and had to convince them that they needed to place their orders much earlier than they were used to. Duke also built a new factory to create more production capacity and Deuter invested in a larger warehouse to create more storage space. And with this, we were able to step by step decrease the overtime. The quality and productivity is getting better because they have now more time to take a rest after work and concentrate on working hours. Most errors happen during overtime. Most work accidents happen during overtime. To make high quality backpacks, you need high quality workers. So workers who are motivated and who stay with the company for a long time. This is Myanmar and these are three of Fairware Foundation outdoor brands, Saleva, Vade, and Jack Wolfskin. They may be competitors in retail, but when it comes to improving working conditions, they joined forces at their shared factories in Myanmar. When we first came to Myanmar, Myanmar was still a military dictatorship, so the general knowledge about international labor rights or labor law in total, it was very, very basic. When they started the project, 
Fairware Foundation was not active in Myanmar yet, but that didn't stop the brands from rolling up their sleeves. Fairware's annual conference was the perfect breeding ground for discussing the how and what of a joint project in Myanmar. We were sitting together and we were discussing the current situation in Myanmar. And then we decided that we have to get active ourselves and want to cooperate. So we decided to join forces and to establish a training program together as a first step and look what's needed next. So we agreed on a method, who would take over what tasks. And we started looking for local partners, for information on the country, for how to prepare the materials and generally to see how we could carry it out. In Smart Myanmar, they found a reliable local partner specialized in factory training on social standards. Uh, we organized a, a training for workers from three different factories um, on uh, the Fairware Foundation Code of Conduct and especially uh, on grievance mechanisms and on uh, communication systems, so how workers uh, can communicate uh, proactively uh, with management. The brands used Fairware Foundation training material and the complaints helpline structure. All the working standards for our foundation has, we yeah, train the management as well as the workers. Cards to the workers with a telephone number where they could call directly in case they had complaints. We, basic steps we bought, a telephone, a SIM card, and had a person who would answer the telephone 24 hours. <laughs>